Hello, my name is Sebastian and I'm a developer advocate at Sitecore. Today, I would like to introduce you to XM Cloud Components, the new component builder that is coming for XM Cloud. In this video, I will show you how components are built and used in XM Cloud pages. We will use data sources from XM Cloud as well as from third party application and take a look behind the scenes of XM Cloud Components. When we talk about components, we mean visual reusable building blocks to build and design the UI of our websites or web shops. But let's focus on the text image component. I can reuse the UI of the component itself and select a known data source to it. I can use the same component on a different page and share the same data source so I can manage it centrally. So what is Axon Cloud Components? XM Cloud Components is an in-browser, front-end as a service, what you see is what you get component builder. So XM Cloud Components adds an option to XM Cloud that enables marketers to take more responsibility in the component creation process. You can work with design atoms, molecules or other components to create functional UI components from scratch. You can connect these components to a wide variety of data sources and power them by data flowing in from one or many providers. XM Cloud Components is divided into three main areas. We have the Builder to assemble components, the Styles section to define the design system and the Data Sources section where we can import data from other content providers. Not mentioned here is the Publishing area that shows a kind of work box with items that need to be reviewed and can be published. Let's go through them one by one before we actually open the browser. In the Component Builder, we can organize and build components. Components can be grouped into collections. Each component can be built of several elements such as cards, badges, buttons, paragraphs, headlines, links, images or other components. Components can have different versions. This can be variations of the same content displayed in a different UI or just handling the responsiveness on different breakpoints. Let me start by creating a new collection. Collections help to organize the components. The same structure will be used in the toolbox in Pages when adding my component to a page. We will see that later. I'll name my collection Components Introduction. Save and add my first component to it. The component needs to have a name. I call it Hero Teaser. You can add an optional description and select the collection you want to store the component in. The one I just created is pre-selected. I save and start editing the component. On my canvas or in my section, I can add new elements. As mentioned, I have text, box or inline elements available, but also variables, links, images, components and HTML blocks. So I add a car to my component, which covers the whole width. I want to use a two column design, so I navigate back to the section and open the layouting and alignment dialog to set the grid to use two columns. I'll copy now some content from the sidecore.com website and paste it into my card. As you can see, the design is replicated in my card. Let me also add a button and change the label inline to read more. Now I add an image. As image source, I use the URL of the background image we just saw on the sitecore.com website. I want to see the image in the background of my card covering the whole section. So I select background as image placement. This looks already close to the component we saw on sidecore.com. Let me change the theme to dark theme, which I prepared up front. Now it looks even closer to the original one and all without writing a single line of code. In order to be able to add the component to my page, I need to stage or publish it. 
In Exim Cloud Pages, the component appears in the front end as a service tab on my components overview. You can see that the component follows the same grouping as my collections. I can drag and drop it on the screen just as any other component. In the Styles section, we can define the design system through a visual design builder, similar to defining styles in your style shield, just visually. This can be seen similar to building a house. So before we can work or live in the house, we need to set it up once. We usually start with the basics or with choosing the bricks. So we define the fonts, the color palette with hacks or RGB codes, graphics or icon sets, and the breakpoints that are relevant to our experience. In the next step, we need to define the right cement to glue the bricks together. So we define rules such as the typography, meaning sets of fonts for different purposes in different sizes or if they should be displayed all capital letters. And sizes can vary per breakpoint. We have decorations, so how boxes, buttons, cards are displayed. We can set how all that should look like in terms of what shapes are used or if we shall have rounded edges, drop shadows or borders. Then we define fills with colors and effects. And we define the standard spacing like paddings or margins. Once the rules are defined, we set up the walls for the house, meaning we can set up the elements we build with. We define text elements like headings or paragraphs using the typography and the colors. We define inline elements such as buttons or badges or links. And we define block elements such as sections or cards using certain spacings, decorations or fields. Last but not least, we can take all the different walls and build the house. This is what we call themes. So the theme combines the setup for text, inline and block elements. From the same walls we can also build different houses, right? So different themes like a dark theme, a bright theme, you name it. As a marketer, you are guided by a workflow when working with Exim Cloud components. New components will start in a draft state. If you want to use the component in pages, you can stage it. If it's ready to go live, you need to publish it. Now, going back for example, unpublishing it or unstaging it will lead to a different state, here marked on the grey tiles. So you always know what a component state is and where it came from. Of course, Component can not only handle static content, but also import content from other content providers such as Content Hub One or other CMSs, ChatGPT, Accept Cloud, or a PIM. Therefore, you can configure data sources. Data sources allow fetching data from any GraphQL or REST endpoint. You can also use static JSON, for example, to mock a response before having actual access. This provides a lot of flexibility for where you can get content from. In the data source section, I can find all configured data sources. There are already some custom data sources, but also data sources that are connected with the out of the box components in XM Cloud, like image, link, promo, or text. Let's create a new component that uses the promo data source. So I add a component and call it promo component. Save and start editing it. I'll add a card again and set the section layout to a two column design. I'll add a paragraph text. And a heading three above. In the second column, I add an image similar to the hero teaser I created before. Now I want to map the heading 3 with the field of my data source. So I click on map text, select the promo data source coming from XM Cloud, and select the promo text field to be used for my headline. For the paragraph I select the promo text 3 field as my source. For the image, I select the Promo Icon Source field. 
stage it and go to pages. The promo component can be found after refreshing the page. When adding it, I'll get asked for a data source, which follows the same process like any other component. I have prepared three promo data sources before, so I select promo1 and assign it to my component. I can see that the content coming from XM Cloud is displayed in my component. Again, without writing any line of code in a very quick and easy way. Of course, I can also add the same component selecting a different data source. For sure, I can use also other data source providers as long as I can access the APIs via REST or GraphQL. Let me just create another component with the name Content Up One Recipes. This time I want to show three recipes in a row. So I select the three column design and add a card. Inside the card, I add an image, adding three and a paragraph text. I pre-created a data source by connecting against the Content Hub 1 GraphQL endpoint. Content Hub 1 is a headless content management system in the Sitecore product portfolio. I requested a list of recipes. On my card, I select now the prepared data source as mapped collection and I choose the result set of it, which contains the list of recipes. You can see that there are four results already. Now I'm mapping the recipe title field to the headline and you can see the data updating instantly. I map the preparation description to the paragraph text and again the data is updated instantly. As Content Hub 1 returns always a list of images, I have to select the results of the image first in the mapped collection and then select the file URL as the mapped source. As mentioned in the beginning, I only want to show three recipes instead of four. So I can limit the results of the data collection in my card to three. There we go. Again, quick and easy without a single line of code. Even though XM Cloud Components is a software as a service application, you want to look a bit behind the curtain to be able to understand the product better and make better decisions when planning your client applications. XM Cloud Components is technically a standalone product which marketers and developers can use to create visual UIs using a what you see is what you get interface. Behind the scenes it creates React based web components and CSS files that are delivered through a CDN to the client. If you use Vercel as a rendering host your application is mostly server side rendered and static content, but you always call the web components client side. Of course, you can use other rendering host providers and you don't have to use Next.js along with XM Cloud. Every framework and provider has its pros and cons. While XM Cloud delivers the content and layouting information to your app rendering host, your rendering host ships the content including the embedded web component information to your client. Therefore, it uses the frontend as a service component tag, providing the library ID to identify the component. In the component builder, you can see and export the React code to use the component somewhere else. You can also export the component to CodePen. As the component is referenced from XM Cloud Components, you can still control the look and feel centrally from a single location. XM Cloud Components is a great new frontend as a service solution. It allows marketers to create reusable components in a what you see is what you get way based on the data sources and design system that has been prepared up front. It simplifies the component creation process in a no code approach with abilities to use custom code. There is already a great set of documentation available if you want to know more about XM Cloud components. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you don't want to miss further content from our Discover Sidequest channel. Leave a comment if you have questions or any remarks. See you next time.